What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This episode we are going to be doing air ride on the travel all, getting it one step closer to Holly LS Fest. We're gonna be running the Builder Series on this truck just like we did the 55 Chevy. These things are really awesome because you can basically custom tailor it to whatever application you might have. Now with an international, the front suspension is something wonky. We have never seen anything like it before. It's got torsion bars on the top of the frame and it also has a bunch of weird things with the spindles because it's got drum brakes in the front as well as the rear. What are we doing, Andrew? Assembly! We're gonna be using a C10 knuckle on the front of the harvester. Nice. We're gonna mock it up, see what kind of clearancing we have to do, if any. Then we're gonna be making some lower mounts and we're gonna be putting them inside of here. We're gonna invert them again. We're gonna create a little pocket inside the upper control arm. So first thing we're gonna have to do is tear apart the front end, get it all broke down, get it all figured out. We're also gonna be changing out the rear end because this little dinky rear end is not gonna be able to hold up to our LS. So we're gonna be upgrading that to a four link and then we're gonna put in the Builder Series shocks back here as well. But before we do all that, let's start getting the front end mocked up. All right, so a little change of plan. Can't say I never make mistakes, but I definitely did. This setup is not gonna work. And some guys in the comment section probably already pointed that out at this point in the video. But as I put the shock on, I notice when you air it up, it's just gonna push the upper control arm up. Um, yeah, my brain just didn't work. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, do this the right way, which is we're going to fix the shock on the chassis on the top and then put the air shock on the lower control arm this time, not the upper. So what we're doing is we're marking out a clearance for the actual upper control arm. And Mikey already opened up this side, so the air shock now will be mounted here. We'll grab one of the Builder Series shocks right now. This one's already been compressed. And we are going to put it right in here, like so. And it lines up on the side of the control arm. So when it airs up, it's gonna push the lower control arm down and lift the vehicle. So, round two. All right, so this is gonna work out a million times better. We have our lower mount set up now, just similar how we had it before. So once it airs up, it's gonna push the lower control arm down, and then that'll be about max ride height right there. So we'll have about six inches of travel Right now, I'm gonna make my mounts straight off the top ear here. We're gonna use the same mounts that we had before on the bottom. Just trace out the profile so we can wrap around the top of that shock mount. All right, everything's pretty much ready to be welded up. The only thing left to do is we're gonna find the angle of these top brackets, make sure they're uh, matching five degrees on both sides. And then we're gonna take some base measurement measurements here. We're not worrying about the control arm hitting the Builder Series shock because this is the lowest it's gonna go. So it's only gonna go away from it. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, so the front end is all set. We have our lower mount. Our top mount, we have our brackets all welded in place. So let's see how it works. When you air it out, it goes right up like that. Boom. At that point, the oil pan is probably pretty close to the ground. To get this thing to lay frame, you'd have to customize everything, guys. And then when you air it up, just like that, air it up. While we were working on the front end, we went ahead and had Liam weld up some boxes for our Viair air compressors. All right, we made these boxes up. This is gonna be our box for one of our compressors. We have one more coming. I've already laid out all my holes where we need to go out with our power feed line and our filter on the side. This is our box for our air management. I built up a little pedestal. I'm gonna cut some holes and install some grommets. I'm also gonna insulate with the Resto-Mod sound bar. Eliminate some of the rattling. We don't like rattling, man. One down, one to go. We got our stainless steel 
Hardware holding the compressor down. Box is insulated. Oh, this thing's got some weight to it. All right, we got one compressor box done and installed in the truck. While Liam's finishing up that other one, we're gonna go ahead and jump on that rear end. But first, a word from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Vitoman. They sent us over this sweet X1 jump starter. You can jump start your car or your truck up to 50 times on a single charge and has a lifespan over a thousand recharge cycles. It also has a built-in tire inflator, which gives you the ability to preset your max pressure values on a built-in LCD screen so you can walk away while your tire is airing up without worrying about overinflating. And when you're not jump starting your dead battery or fixing your flat tire, you could use the portable power bank to charge your phone, tablet, camera, or any other small device. And even with all these features, they still manage to pack in a super bright LED with a strobe and SOS function with up to 36 hours of light at its max brightness. This little guy is super handy and I always make sure to keep one in the truck because you never know when you might need to jump or air up your tire. If you wanna check these guys out, I have a link in the description below so you can grab one of these Vitamin X1 jump boxes. Now let's get back to work on that travel and get the differential swapped out. All right, we got the 12 volt loosely mounted in there on three jack stands, so we're nice and level. Went ahead and cleaned up the axle tubes, got rid of the old leaf spring shackles that were originally on this rear end. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna slide the rear end forward. We're gonna put some rotors on there and wheels so we can simulate the actual track width and the ride of the truck before we start putting our four link in. We're gonna do a bunch of measuring, make sure our pinion angle is where we want it, and then we'll go ahead and start connecting the dots from the axle tube to the chassis. All right, so we got the rear end all set. We got the wheels back on so that we could center up the wheel well. There's gonna have to be a little rolling going on when this thing airs out, but all in all, that's pretty much where it's going to sit. Now, we have our rear end pretty much lined up where it was originally. We left the factory bump stops here that we'll remove later, so we know exactly where these axle tubes were. So I'm pretty happy with the position. We're gonna pull the wheels back off so we have access to the side and be very careful not to bump this thing because if we do, we're gonna be in trouble. We're gonna be using this four link kit. These are our actual plates that are gonna weld onto the axle tubes. We have standard thread and reverse thread heim joints, and then we have some chromoly tubing. These brackets are gonna be welded on the axle tubes on the outside of the frame rail, right where the leaf spring used to be. The wider, the better. We also have to cut our own brackets on the frame rail on the bottom to be able to accept the four link. So right now I'm gonna start cutting lengths for the chromoly tubing and getting the actual bracket situated on the axle tubes while Liam cuts some brackets for the frame rail on our plasma table. I have mocked up the bracket that we're gonna be putting on the chassis. I am using the heim joint so I can get the proper thickness. And a one inch plate for the backing right here. I'm gonna be lifting it up a little bit so I have a little bit of a space like that. So I can do a root pass and then a nice little cat pass. This is our chassis bracket. This is what's gonna hold the four link on the chassis side. And then we have our axle side, and this is gonna go like that. So, what we have is forward thread. These will go here. And then we have reverse thread. These are gonna go here. And then we have all the corresponding bungs. So once we cut the lengths of our chromoly tubing, we'll weld these on the either end, making a connection from the chassis to the axle. We're gonna go ahead and tack weld our shackles to the axle first, and then we'll go ahead and tack weld our bracket on the chassis side. Then we'll be able to throw our hind joints in and get a rough measurement of the length of the actual four length. Once we get that, then we'll start chopping up material.
All right, we got our four link bars all welded up. This is chrome all guys, so it's lightweight and it should serve our purpose just fine. We got our larger diameter on the bottom and a smaller diameter on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and throw them in the truck now, make sure everything's good, and then we'll final weld all the bracketry in the travel wall. So we got the axle on the bench. We're gonna go ahead and do final weld up on the shackles. For whatever reason, the driver's side is off by a half inch, and we did a bunch of measurements and discovered that the actual frame rail are a half inch shifted over. So we had our four links on this side were nice and square, and our four link on this side was kicked out like that. So we went ahead and marked on the axle tube half inch over. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna clean all this up put a fresh mark on either one of these as much as I can, cut them loose. We'll bolt them back together with the correct spacing that we need and then shift them over a half inch. Tack them up and then do a final weld and that should fix our issue. All right, we got our four link shackles welded up inside and out. We also modified our pickup point for our shock from up here down to here. And we are all set and ready to go. We're gonna throw this thing back in the car now. All right, so we got our Builder Series shocks installed. Our four link is all looking good. We got our new hardware. We got one last step we have to do, which is put a pitman arm in. So an arm's gonna weld from here down to the axle. What that will do is it'll stop the rear end from swaying back and forth. And once that's all set, then the air ride system back here is pretty much done. All right, so as you guys can see from the time lapse, we went ahead and removed the bump stops, jacked it up as high as we could, and we noticed that it's just not low enough. So the tires right now are hidden in this inside lip. So we're gonna go ahead and trim that back a little bit so we can get the rear axle as high as we can go in the back so that we can get it as low as we possibly can. We're not going to be doing a C-notch or something, anything crazy like that in this, but we do want to maximize the amount of low we can go. So we're going to go ahead and trim that up first. Then we're going to reinstall our shocks and then our pins that hold the upper shock. We're actually going to move that on top of the frame rail as opposed to on the side. But first we got to cut this inner lip. All right, so we had to move our mounts back for our builder series shocks. We got our ride height exactly where we want it based off of how low it's gonna go when we air it out. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull these back out, final weld our rear shackle. So now we're gonna try working on our trailing arm. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna be using these two brackets here. We're gonna weld to the chassis, and then we have this chrome molly piece of tubing that's gonna go all the way across to the passenger side on the axle. What this does, it's gonna be attached like this and it's gonna stop the rear end from shifting back and forth. So we're gonna go ahead and tack it up now, mock it up in the back of the truck. All right, so it's time to put the front suspension back together on the travel all. We've got our knuckles machined to fit our international ball joints. So we brought these over to JC and he cut a new taper in here for these ball joints. These are a C10 knuckle from CPP, but we're retrofitting it to fit on the front of our International. Sean's getting all the wiring done for the air management. The last thing we gotta do is run our lines to our front and rear air shock. So I'm gonna be using some quarter inch lines supplied by Airlift Performance. I already got my fittings right here got my fitting here and i got it already inside of the box up, up front or in the back so now all i do is attach all this quarter inch line on our frame rails from the front to the back make it all tidy and we're ready to go up and down man what do you think i think she's looking pretty good
All right, we got the travel all back on the ground. She's off the jack stands. We got the front air suspension all dialed in. We got the rear fabrication done. Timmy did a nice four link setup. Our boy Sean's got the whole airlift management system all wired in. We got all of our lines plumbed to our compressors, to our air shocks. I think it's time to see this thing go up and down. What do you think, Timmy? I think so. Let's go. All right, let me plug in the battery real quick. Temporary battery setup. We don't have a battery tray yet. Fire up. Whoa. Oh. Got some, some sauce. <laughs> Too much sauce. Oh yeah. All right, well that's a wrap for this week. We got the air system all finished up on this puppy. Next week, we're getting ready to drop in that 60 LS. We're gonna do all kinds of other goodies while the motor's out. And then also we're gonna start plumbing the brake lines and the fuel system while we have the engine out. And then we're gonna install it. And then, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do, but those, that's what's gonna be happening next episode. What do we got, three weeks to LS Fest? About three weeks. So we gotta get this thing ready. We also, don't forget about the 350Z. We gotta get that thing ready for drifting. So Andrew's gonna get out there and compete with the rest of these Hoonigans. Yeah, boy. And if this video gets a thousand likes, he'll shave off his horrible, horrible mustache. Yeah, wow. Wee -wee. All right, anyways, that's a wrap, man. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll see you next week. Peace.